Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for those of you who are watching uh, GFF Media. We are here uh, in Abu Dhabi uh, for another training camp ahead of our return to the African qualifiers. And here with us is the head coach. Coach, once again, good to see you for another camp. Yeah, I'm very happy to see you. It's uh, two months ago uh, that we had the training camp and I really miss it all the time to be together with the players, together with the staff. It's a part of the national team. We can't train that much, but when we are together, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, Coach, um, the staff and the players have been traveling to Abu Dhabi here. Take us to speed as to who and who are in camp and who is not and why some yeah. of them are not in camp at the moment. Yeah, uh, we, we had a pre-selection of 35 and a selection of 25 uh, announced. Uh, these clubs were more than two weeks ago announced. That's according to the FIFA rules. Uh, we are always in communication with players and clubs. Uh, but the last hours we, we get some uh, absentees, some strange uh, things happening. Uh, Hamza Berry would have a visa issue, cannot travel from the United States and will be not available uh, for the games. We got in the middle of the night today informed about that. Then Budarbu is not allowed to travel from his club. Also in the middle of the night we got informed about it. Um, Ibrima Darbu, he will come uh, tomorrow because he was yesterday with uh, as Roma. Omar Kholi will arrive uh, tonight. Uh, but also players like Modu Barrow, is not allowed to travel. He has still uh, game duty. Uh, Saini and Jai will travel uh, tomorrow normally. Um, and then actually uh, yeah, a few players who, who, who are not available, uh, who we were counting on. I think about the likes of Ibu Adams, um, who, who say he is injured, but who played every game with his club. Uh, Sadi Janko, who really preferred to play with his club in the qualification and not uh, coming for the national team duty. Uh, Noah Songo Sundberg, who had the, the medical issue that we knew already in advance. But these are the absentees uh, where we really were hoping that they were here. Um, so it's a little bit puzzling at the moment. Uh, I think we have at this moment 16 players in camp. Um, uh, we just arrived, so tomorrow of tonight we're going to have a first training session. Uh, but I hope the coming days to, to have more players into camp because it's important that everyone uh, we selected is there. Uh, because the, the, uh, the, the game against the uh, United Arab Emirates is a, it's a tough match. They are 68 in the world. It's one of the toughest opponents we played uh, the last years. And they are in the running for the World Cup. They play the 8th of uh, June against Australia to go uh, to, to Qatar World Cup as a strong nation and also friendlies are important not only for the FIFA ranking but also to prepare ourselves for the good start in, in AFCON. I will come to that coach, uh, but you mentioned some of the players uh, who are not coming uh, like Hamza, James and Dembo Davo. Are they not available for only this UAE game or they will not also be available for the qualifiers against South Sudan and, and Congo? Yeah, James, uh, he, he became he qualified for the promotion in the, in the top league uh, on Monday. Uh, so we were counting that he would travel because there's one game to play what has no importance for his club. Uh, his club was willing to release him, but James has decided that he preferred to be with his club. Uh, it's a little bit disappointing, uh, to be honest, because we, we want people who uh, are ready to, to defend their nation also in these games. It counts for, for FIFA ranking. But James will arrive uh, in Dakar. Uh, Dembo Darbu will arrive there, Modubero will arrive there. Uh, so they will be there for, for the qualifier games. That's good. But naturally, a friendly is there to prepare the qualifiers, and we need the best players also in these friendlies because in national team you have no friendlies like in club football. Club football you play 10, 15 friendlies, if you lose them no one cares. National team also a friendly is important to get good results. But the likes of Hamza Berry uh, will be not available also for, uh, for the, the qualifiers and that's naturally a, a big disappointment because we all know the quality of Hamza Berry. Uh, he showed it also in the qualification against Angola and DRC before he got injured. And um, we were really counting on him. And the problem is that uh, because of visa issues, uh, we are limited in, in inviting uh, new players in the last moment. Because if you get informed when you already arrived in Dubai, there is no much chance to, to, to act and to react uh, to call other players. So it's a little bit sad that these clubs or players uh, don't uh, inform us earlier. So how is this going to impact your preparation? Yeah, we, I, I, I'm happy with the group of players we have. We have, a, we have always players who are very committed and very, uh, are very loving for, for their country. I give you an example from what a real captain is, Omar Kali. He had booked a holiday with his family, um, but because he knew that we would play a friendly before the FIFA break, uh, he cancelled his holiday with his family to come for the country. And, and we have players with the heart for the Gambia. And, that's fantastic in national team duty, that's very important. So naturally we will have uh, less choices, we will have 
not 25 people, even maybe not 20 people uh, for the game against Emirates and we will not have on every position maybe our first choice in uh, what we had in mind. But the players who are there, they will give everything for the country and we have to do our best with the right commitment to, to, uh, to show uh, the Gambians and to show the world that we are uh, up to level uh, to compete again with the best. Coach, uh, also back home, uh, uh, like on social media, a lot of people ask why you don't call players like uh, Ali Sos, why you don't call Simpson Young and others. Of course, not everyone is going to be satisfied. Everybody has their star player. But can you tell us why some of the players we are not seeing in the national team? Yeah, first of all, um, I have to say that uh, since I arrived in Gambia, uh, the social media always want other players than I selected. If I select player A, they want player B. If I select player B, they want player C. If I select player C, they want player D. So it's always like that. Since I arrived, everyone was shouting for other players. And, and many times it's also because they, many people are misinformed. Uh, Ali Soe, for instance, um, um, is already four weeks injured. He's not playing with his club. And um, he's uh, playing in Russia, but he, he, he scored one goal in the last six months. Uh, I see sometimes other numbers online and, and these kind of things. With all respect for Ali, but the right information, we are aware of these things. Uh, Sheriff Sing Yang, also a player who frequently get mentioned, is already six months uh, injured, uh, is also not available. Um, um, and, and so are a few of these players who the public really want or pushing for it, uh, but they are not available, they have injuries. And, and um, sometimes uh, the public know the, not really the statistics, the, the influences. And I think sometimes it's also unfair. Um, people compare the players who are selected with players who are not selected. And sometimes there is disrespect for the players who are selected. Uh, we played at AFCON uh, with a group of players, maybe not always the favorites of, of every person, but these players played fantastic. And um, maybe something what, what people may not forget is um, you can play in a club um, because a club coach wants you, because a club coach play a different system where you fit in. And some players don't play in that club because a club coach don't like the player or the player is brought by a wrong agent into a club or, or, or the player, the coach has to use difficult tactics. So as a national team coach, you cannot select players based if they play on their club level. I prefer that my players play in club level. That's naturally always the best. But I have no control over the selection and the tactical choices of a club coach. Uh, you can be the best player for the Gambia national team, but not playing in your club because the club coach uses different tactics or has a, a player he likes more. And another player can play every week in his club, but not fit in the tactics of the national team, or being maybe not that committed to the national team, not having the heart on the right place. And I think we have shown that in the past, sometimes we have selected players who play in lower leagues, who people thought why they are selected in the national team, and players who play in top leagues are not selected. Uh, but these players who play in lower leagues brought it, they brought the results and, and the qualification and the sixth spot in AFCON. So I think we as staff, we know very well what we are doing. Another thing and topic what I would like to address is the fact of local based players. Uh, yeah. First of all, yes, I'm most of the time abroad. I visit a lot of players, I travel around. Don't forget at this moment of time, Gambia has over 150 players over, uh, all spread over the world. That's unique. Why is this? A few reasons, because of, first of all, we have very good development in, in football in Gambia. The fact that we have so many foreign-based players, we must be happy for that, we must be proud for that. A small country like Gambia with 150 professionals abroad is unique. It's the quality of the clubs, the development of the clubs, the club owners who really have a business plan, who make good connections, who make transfers. That's fantastic. The development of the football in the federation, our results with the under 20, our results with the senior team, open doors. A winning country is more attractive for, for clubs to, to buy players of. And actually also the financial situation in, in our league. I mean, I worked in Africa in so many places. In Tanzania, a local based player has 1,005, 2,000 US dollar a month. Uh, in Ethiopia, similar things. So these players prefer to play in their local league. But the Gambian player who earns 50 US dollar, who gets an offer for 1,000 dollar or 800 dollar in Estonia, it's very understandable, there are financial reasons. He easier go on the young age abroad. And, and people, yeah, if you have the quality in Gambia, 
in theory you will be scouted by, by, by foreign clubs, by scouts, by uh, agents and you will make that step and it's very good for our football and it's the quality of our clubs and really my huge respect for all these club owners who have good academies, who develop players, for all these players who make these steps but also for the federation who developed uh, uh, something what was never happened before. Did Gambia had always good foreign uh, based players? Yes. Even in 2003, uh, the majority was foreign based players. 15. In 2015, 35 foreign based players were in the national team. In uh, 2007, 28 foreign based players were in the national team. And even that time, the foreign based players were more regular in their clubs. I think about the Yatos in 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 in, 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 in two, Ibusilas in RBC Rosendal, uh, Sonko in Role ASA. They were more safe for in racing gang, and so they were more regulars. But Gambia had always foreigners abroad, and even in the past, all the foreign coaches, if it was uh, Simon Don, Bono Johnson, Paul Put, Martinez, uh, Raul Savoie, the majority of their players in the first eleven were foreign based players. But now we have a booming because of the result of our quality um, players that we have so many foreign based players. Secondly, we then naturally monitor also our local league. I think we are one of the few national teams with the majority of our technical team, technical team being local based. The most important people in my staff are local based. Alain Gisar, former national team player, is a local based coach who follow every week the games. We talk day in, day out together. Um, Alain Maron, goalkeeper, also former national team, um, following the local league daily base. I have Lamin Sar, the coach of Falcons, who I'm already four years using as my scout, who update daily base. We are talking every day about the selection, about which players are developing there. Uh, Usman Drame, a club owner, former coach, my team manager, who uh, followed the, the local league close. So we monitor the local league and what never happened in the past, we monitor the, monitor the foreign based players. And um, I, 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 I can say that, I pay all my trips by myself, my flight tickets, my hotels, but that's part of my job. I'm a passionate coach, I follow the players, I, I, I am in touch with players in Bangladesh, I'm in touch with players in Estonia, I'm in touch with players in the United States, all over the world, but also in Senegal, also in South Africa, all over the world we monitor our players and we have the, all the facts, the data, and if local players have the quality, you will see they will make very soon the step abroad. In AFCOM, six countries had no local based player. Comoros and Guinea-Bissau were in AFCOM without one local based player. We had one, at that time Ibrima Sona and uh, Bubasani had no club, and together with us, Senegal had one local base player, Nigeria had one local base player, they were goalkeepers as third goalkeepers, local base player. But this is the influence of football in Africa. If you have a good national team who is performing, players will go abroad, get contracts, and I think it's beneficial for football because these players earn money, they will bring it back in the country, they will invest in the future of football. So I think a lot of questions are, are answered. We follow the local league, we have a lot of foreign based players, we have a very quality uh, staff, local based staff who I'm daily in touch, who inform me about every quality player and, and actually every player can be selected but it's clear that we also have a base of players who have proven record, who showed the whole world that Gambia is a football nation, six spot in AFCON and that's the base where we work on but every time we are developing the door is open for everyone and we will see what the future brings. Coach, another burning issue back home uh, is the fact that uh, the fans would love to see the national team play at home. Of course, it's unfortunate that uh, the national team cannot play at home for obvious reasons because the stadium is banned. Some people were thinking that, um, of course, the national team would come and, and prepare in Gambia a day or two before the game. You know, we travel to Senegal, but then we are here in Abu Dhabi. Why did the national team come to Abu Dhabi? First of all, um, we we are limited in our opportunities to play friendlies. We got the direct request from the uh, United Emirates, Emirates, uh, Arab Emirates Federation to come here and play a friendly. And this trip is, is uh, fully paid uh, by this organization. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity uh, for our professional players to, to perform in, in uh, train and in good circumstances. And actually we miss Gambia. We would have loved to play in Gambia. I mean, our home games, I remember my first game 
when 45,000 people were in the stadium against Algeria. Algeria. It's one of the most beautiful moments in my career and I will never forget that. Also against DRC when we played 2-2 when the stadium exploded and everything. We love our fans. It's a little bit sad that, that uh, CAF doesn't allow us to play home and I think with us about 26 countries who are not allowed to play at home. Um, and it's a little bit strange if a year ago we could still play at home and now not. But that's not in my that's not my territory. I'm a football coach, I'm focused on technical things and I can't know the details about stadium issues. So we would have preferred to play at home, clear with the fans. Uh, but training at home, uh, we are professionals. We are not there to, to do meet and greets before games. Um, naturally, there will be moments that the fans can have to see us uh, also in the stadium. I hope a lot of Gambian fans will join us in DS uh, to support the national team in a positive way. But naturally, we, we, we also have to use the opportunities if we can play a friendly uh, and prepare ourselves. We have to limit our travel times. Uh, we have a straight flight from, uh, from Abu Dhabi, from Dubai to, to Dakar. So this makes it us easier. It would have been best to play our home game in, uh, in uh, Gambia, but that's out of our control and that's uh, something I can't change right now. Coach, the time you took the national team of the Gambia, few people, if any, uh, gave us chance of qualifying for the African Cup of Nations. But then, you came to the Gambia, and you came three years ago, your mission was only one thing, to secure Gambia that first ever qualification for the African Cup. Against all the odds, it was achieved. The first team, coming from the three qualifiers, to come and not only qualify for the African Cup, but also win its group, containing former World Cup uh, finalists in Congo, and Angola and also Gabon perennial yeah. African championship uh, uh, finalist. We went to the African Cup of Nations. Not only did we win our first group game, even though countries like Guinea Bissau and, and, and Mauritania have been there before us, they never win a group game. We were, you know, um, we went to the quarterfinals and finished sixth overall in Africa. Quite a remarkable achievement. Of course, a lot of people expected that. Tom was going to go away, Gambia was never going to keep him. Of course, we all know, if it is for the money, you had better offers to leave. But here comes a first start for you. You came through a lot of pre-qualifiers, and now that uh, we are through, of course, qualifiers, pre-qualifiers will be history for us. But then, going into this African Cooperation Qualifiers, so Cameroon uh, for Ivory Coast Rally 2023, what is the target? Yeah, first of all, I think it's, it's really impressive, and sure, it's almost four years I'm in Gambia right now, uh, no one expected it. We were 172 in the world before my arrival. Uh, it was five years without a competitive win. The last competitive win before my arrival was September 2013 against Tanzania. Uh, and then five years without competitive win and then been in October 2018 of November 2018 was the first win in five years in competition. We were 172 in the world and some play people like to say, ah, but we have different players. 90% of my squad were already the five years before I arrived there. The Omar Collis, the Suleiman Mares, the Modu Jobs, the Pamudu Jangs, the Ibrima Sonas, the Daudan Gums, the Mohamed Mbais, even Musa Barrow was already playing in Serie A uh, before I arrived, uh, was not selected, but they were available and people could select them, Abu Adams, everyone was there. So the squad was already there. I didn't make much changes in the squad. Only the results were, were changing and, and that's teamwork, that's the support of the Federation, a very good technical team around me, uh, everyone is supporting staff and very motivated players. And we went to really to find players with the heart for the country, uh, who are really committed to achieve things uh, together. Um, AFCON qualification was amazing, AFCON was one of the most beautiful moments in my life and um, I had a sweet taste and taste for more. And yes, after AFCON there were a lot of uh, offers, uh, a lot of very interesting financial offers uh, out of the Arab world, uh, some other national teams, some big club teams in, in, uh, in, in the Arab world, in the North Africa, but also in, uh, in the Gulf. Um, but um, people who know me know that I feel very happy in the Gambia. I, I traveled a lot in the world. I worked with a lot of federations. Most of the federations have finished my contract, but sometimes they had low budget. I think about Bangladesh, who signed a three-month contract, Ethiopia five months, Malawi three months, till the end of the qualification and the money was finished. In Gambia, I started with very little money, but I worked with a federation who is very committed, um, who is um, willing to help the coach and, and give the freedom to work. And um, I have a very lot of joy of working, also with my staff, with the likes of Alaji Sar, Alaji Marong, Usman Drami, 
quality local people who are very committed, who are day and night available, and we work as professionals. And the joy of work with my staff, with my players, is so much more important than, than dollars or money or anything else. And um, I feel that my, um, my journey with, with, with Gambia is not yet finished. We have so much potential, we have a young group. It will depend how the players develop in their club uh, in the future, how far we can go. But I really have the feeling that we still can achieve more. It will be very tough uh, now because you saw Madagascar, Burundi, they were in 2019 and AFCON, they didn't qualify 2021. It won't be easy, but if we keep our feet on the ground, if we are humble and respect our opponents, I think we can do everything and have a chance to qualify for Ivory Coast next year. And that's what I want to achieve uh, with the Gambia. Build further on this team, implement more and more young players, and then achieve something, maybe learn from the past to, to achieve more. But it will be already very difficult to qualify. But I have really everyday joy of working with these people. It's a, it's a family, it's a fantastic federation. I worked with 10 federations in the world, 11 even when I worked also with Qatar. And I can compare federations. And I know there's a lot of criticism and people talk about federations and criticize people. But don't forget that this federation is the federation who did all these things. Not only on senior level. Mataram Boch winning two times the WAFO championship, finishing third in, in, in the Africa Cup um, last year. Senior national team achieving this. So many players, so many clubs who are learning to become professional. It's thanks also to the federation to sell players the development of football. And I'm a part of this fantastic federation, of this fantastic generation of people, staff and players. And it's a pleasure and an honor there. And we're going to do all together everything to repeat what we did uh, the last years by qualification. But we have to be also realistic. It's not easy. Uh, Mali is much better on the FIFA ranking us, it's a higher standard team than us. Congo Brazzaville is still 25 positions better on the ranking than us, also more experienced. And even South Sudan is not a walkover. So if we are humble and focused, we can achieve something. And I'm ready to work very hard together with the team to, to do my best to achieve that. But you made an interesting point, and that is where we are going to uh, draw the curtain on that. This interview. You said you really work like working with this Gambia Football Federation who would like to give you the freedom to work. I'm tempted to ask this question. Has anyone in the leadership of the, the, the Gambia Football Federation, you know, tries to influence who you select for the national team or you are the one who is entirely responsible for the selection of the players? Uh, since my arrival, I never got interference from any one of the board. Um, we work as a team, what means that my technical department is always uh, in consultation uh, we really, our WhatsApp, our internet is 24 hours, 7 days a week on. Can be in the middle of the night at 1 o'clock, can be in the morning at 7 o'clock, can be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We are always chatting and talking to each other, we always consult each other, and we are working very hard on that. Uh, but the board members are never interfering in that. I have a very good quality technical team where we consult. Uh, like I said, I have with the likes of Lamin Sani, even a young, talented, quality local coach who gives me also his impression about quality players and the selection and several other people within Gambian football I'm consulting um, and together we try always to find the, the right decisions uh, but there's no one of the board who ever interferes in, the, in these things. It's not their job and they know perfect, perfect what's their job and like I said I can compare federations and um, the reason that we are so successful is also the quality of the board who is uh, leading the federation as a football federation has to be run. Thank you, Coach. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. You're welcome.